G'day, I'm Gavin from Hurley Spy Fishing and welcome to another episode of On The Fly. We're at Great Lake in uh, January on a pretty calm morning and uh, anyone who's fished Great Lake knows that this is pretty hard to come by. We've got quite a good uh, slick here full of uh, midge that have hatched perhaps last night and they're still floating on the, on the uh, surface and a lot of these fish are going to come and mop them up. So we've got um, a, a done pattern. Funny enough, uh, there's so many midge here we're going to put something a little bit different so that they see it. And we're just going to cruise along here with the electric and you'll watch them feeding and they will feed upwind. We're going to put this fly in front of them and hope they're going to like it. So uh, pretty stunning location to spend the morning watching that sun come up in a fabulous environment in Tasmania. Right. So we've got one rising consistently straight across over there. And we want to, you want to hurry up and slow down. We want to get there quick. We don't want to disturb him. And he's just, he's not even moving. Same spot. Just a little bit short. There we go. And that's good when it takes just the one cast and oh, it was actually two but the first one was a bit short and we've gone for something different what we're saying is there's lots and lots of uh, midge all through this and they're tiny little um, sources of food and if we just throw exactly the same thing in there it's uh he's not going to see it just as i stood on the electric then so we've thrown a, uh, I've got a possum emerger and a dun pattern and that certainly worked because it's something different and uh, a much bigger food item and he really liked it. But you could see him there, he's probably risen 10 or a dozen times in two foot uh, area and if you have a look just at the, uh, the water there, all those little dots that you'll see on the camera, that's actually food. So that's a, a little midge that have died. Um, quite a lot of food and he would just sit there it's the easiest bit of tucker he's going to ever get and it's just great to be out here in the morning in Tasmania hardly a breath of wind you've got lovely clear water and you've got fish that want to take your fly and you go well that's pretty good fun so love Tasmania I've gone with a five weight because normally I'll use a six weight on a lot of these lakes but because it's so calm I've gone down to a stalker legend in a five weight which gives a much more subtle presentation which is quite important at times over waters like this where it is quite calm and you get that slick on there so uh, yeah certainly worked on this fish lovely little brown there and just love that it was a possum emerger but that'll look like a either an emerging dun or even a spent spinner. And we don't really care as long as he eats it, so that worked out okay. And they just never give in. Lovely cool water in these lakes. Gives them plenty of energy. And look at that, still ripping off line after quite a few minutes of fighting. There you go, beautiful. They're just great fun. And just, I think the visual aspect of it, being in a, a wonderful place is really cool. Um, but to see him feeding pretty constantly, and there's a few other fish that we've seen rising as well. So we're gonna have lots of opportunities, which is what uh, makes places like Great Lake fantastic. I oh, don't no, mate. Beautiful. It's always good to get off a duck every day and that's a lovely fish we'll keep in the water for as long as we can but that's easily a that's a two and a half quart to three pound fish which is fantastic to take your fly first go so that's pretty cool so we'll get that hook out and send him on his way right, we'll just quickly lay him down here get that hook out just in such good condition too just the girth from plenty of food Great tool. Catch your release. Hang on, mate. Beautiful fish. 
beautiful. Lovely brown, had a great lake, easily caught to three pound. We'll just put him back in there. And just take your time. They've given you a fair bit of enjoyment. Over a good few minutes, we can spend a little bit of time until he's ready to go. Just needs a bit of oxygen through his gills and he'll let you know when he's ready to swim off. We certainly give him a fright, but uh, no doubt he's much happier being let go to continue what he was doing. That's it, he's nearly ready. Yeah, he's got that tail flick. There he goes, he'll be right to go now. Perfect. With a bit of luck, we'll just um, cruise along in the electric, find a few more of the rising, and uh, put that fly in front of him again. Three or four fish rising just over there to the right. No doubt it's hard looking into that, that sun, but if we can get up above them and uh, perhaps even sneak down. There he goes. Cast over to the right of him. Two of them just in here. One of them up there. Another one over there. And it really is hard to concentrate with so many fish, but you've got to focus on one. Otherwise, you're sort of like a machine gun sort of going everywhere. to work out the, the path that they're going. Like, because we need to get in front of them. If there's wind, they will feed up wind. But in a place like this now, there's not. So you've got to watch where that rise form goes and there'll be a, a definite angle as to the direction it's going. And then you can judge which way that fish is swimming and hopefully get that fly in front of him. Yeah. There we go. And that was that was good because we could sort of judge, I guess, the direction he was going. Because that rise form, it's almost like a, a wave pushing in more one direction than the other. And you can have a bit of a guess. We can't see the fish just on this glare at the moment, but we can see the rise form which is pretty cool. And that's what, again, I just love about fly fishing. Like the side fishing aspect is incredible. So uh, here, even though we can't see the fish, we can see it's certainly rising and it gets the heart pumping because you know if you can get that cast in the right spot, he's gonna take it. Uh, and when they do, when you set that hook and he's there, you feel the weight, you go, yeah, that's all pretty cool, pretty cool. And just great fun. I mean, not a breath of wind, it's just stunning. And anybody who's fished Tasmania knows how windy it can get, like up in the central highlands up here. So this is uh, just, a, just a red leather day. Beautiful blue sky. You got browns on the end of your fly rod, taking dries. Doesn't get much better than that. Lovely deep water here, and they've got plenty of room that we can let them run and uh, often they'll go down and scream off, but we're not having to contend with rocks and sticks and logs. And it also gives you plenty of time to suss out the next fish. We've got run rising there, across over the other side. Yeah. Look at these lovely uh, little mountains up here in the highlands. Oh, fantastic. I've got a weight forward line and it uh, makes it much easier to cast much faster. But in a dull colour, it's quite, uh, at the business end, is quite a, a dull uh, green, but it doesn't frighten the fish. 
and I've got actually quite long leaders. I've got a 12 foot leader. Oh, beautiful little brown there. Uh, gained a couple of pounds. Beautiful fish, beautiful. 12 foot leaders, plus I've got uh, Grand Max fluorocarbon. Got about four feet of that to the first fly and about four feet to the next fly. So you've got quite big leaders, but particularly now with not much wind around, it's relatively easy to cast. And it just keeps everything away from that fish, the fly line as it lands all the way, a uh, long way from the fish. So all it can focus on is just that fly. Beautiful little fish there, just he's just about uh, buggered. What well, you'd think he's just about buggered, but got a little bit of kick left in him. Come on, mate. Nearly there. And that's what we want. We want that fish on the surface like that, ready for netting. You don't want to have to go duck diving for them. Come on, mate. Whoop. And then when they do thrash around like that, just let him have line if he needs to. Pull the net away until he's calm again. And then slip that net under him when he's relaxed. And it works out pretty well. Beautiful, it's three pound, brilliant brown. And uh, if we can just get him in the water. Beautiful fish, just in great condition. Oh, there he goes, he gave me a fright then. Plenty of go left in him, so uh, yeah. He'll be good for somebody else to catch when you come over to Tasmania. Fish the Great Lake, get a fish like that, absolute gold. Another one rising pretty consistently here, just on the other edge. One there, another one there, another one there. And again, you've just got to try and focus on one. So many, oh, and you just see another couple rising there. With so many fish around, oh, and one just there. Um, and I guess if you just have a look there with the camera, because it's so calm, you can have a look at where the water's, uh, the movements, and you can see where the rises are. So it gives you somewhere to, to target. But we want the ones that are consistently coming up. So what we call a once if he comes up once and then sort of finishes, then it's hard to track where he's gonna be. So you want ones that are, get a bit of a rhythm going and you can work out where they're gonna be next. There's that one just in there. We might just go there first. There, you can see that rise, and it's just heading away from us a little. A little bit short. I want him to come up again and show us where he is. One just here. I can see him just under the surface. Oh, I might have just spooked him, I think. Here's one. Come on, mate. We just want to get in front of it, that's all. So we'll just get that fly in front. Yes, that's it. You could just see him come up and take that. I'm sure they they start thinking, is it is it real, is it real? And 
you can see their mind change pretty quickly as soon as you set that hook. That's uh, fantastic. And we've had to move a couple of times where we're in a little bit closer and then just move out. You've got to stay where the slicks are. And as soon as you get ripple on that water, all these little midge and spent spinners will get waterlogged and pushed down to the bottom, which is no good for a fly fisher. So we need them on the surface. So as you look around over there, you can see like some calmer water. That's a real slick or a wind lane. And that's where all the food's still gonna be up on the surface. And uh, the fish get to see it, they'll rise and we can put our fly in front of them. So you've gotta keep on the move because these wind lanes will alter throughout the time as wind changes as well. And uh, if you stay in that area, you're gonna be in the right place to uh, be able to put your fly in front of these feeding fish. I'll just uh, swing him around there. But it's certainly exciting fishing. Yeah, just go. And just being so sight orientated, you know, rising fish everywhere. Just make it so enjoyable. And a lot of them don't like to see it fall. They like to find it. So you've got to lead them by a little way. And as they're swimming, they go, oh, look at that. There's a spent spinner. And just never give in. Sometimes if, particularly out in the middle of a lake, if something's splatting on top of them, it's probably danger. So that can tend to spook them a bit. So you want to lead the fish a little bit. So as he's swimming along, he finds your fly and thinks it's a good idea to eat it. And the five weight, I think, oh yeah, gee, wow. I think the five weight's an ideal rod for this sort of stuff because it is about presentation. You can get that presentation, you can let them run. It's going to absorb all the lunges and just work. Just grab that net. We're uh, getting pretty close, I would think. There we go. And we don't want to duck dive after him. We just want his head up where he has no strength. Once his head is almost there. And this is where a lot of people, if we're jumping and diving after him, we're going to hit the, uh, the fly and lose him. Just wait till he's on the top and slip that net right under him. And uh, yeah, at least you look like you know what you're doing. But I love the little fish again. Yeah, probably two and a half pound. Beautiful fish in great condition again which is just incredible. It's just a, a wonderful lake. As all of these lakes in Tasmania are, there's just so many different opportunities. Um, yeah, just incredible, incredible. I think when God made uh, Tasmania, he had trout in mind when he made it. This is just the perfect place for a trout to live. Right on the top, it's a possum emerger, which is just a great little fly. Looks like a nymph with uh, just a little bit of possum on top to make him float. And it looks like that's the wing case just sitting up there. And uh, yeah, who cares? They, they might think it's a spent spinner. They might think it's lots of things, but they eat it. And at the end of the day, that's all that really worries us. Beautiful fish. We'll get him back in. We won't hold him out too much. Put up a terrific fight in that one. Here he goes, whoa! He got off in a hurry. Perfect. Just here, very close. I want him to see our flies pretty quickly before we run over the top of him. Oh, little fish. There you go, he did take the fly and shoot off. Only a small little one. We won't worry too much. There it is again. Oh. One just Good mate. There we go. And it did. Pretty cool to uh, just see, you just need that direction on where they're going, and you do get that wave, the, the, the force of that wave going in one particular direction, you know that's where he's going, and you put that cast right up in, uh, in front of him, and it certainly works. Yeah, it's good when a plan comes together, so uh, 
that's good we're just cruising along just the shallow side here and there's certainly all that the the food is going to be washed up along that bank as well so there's certainly food spread out through the whole uh, area or this bay in here and the fish know it and they spread themselves out at times as, as well because there's plenty of food for everybody so they actually play quite nice good table manners just as he's going out wherever he wants to go just I always like to get them uh, on the reel and let the reel that you pay so much money for do its job with a good drag system this is one of the stalker reels good drag Get it on there and then it's not going to, your line's not going to hook up on anything or even your hands, your clothing, various parts of your boat. And perfect. And he's taken the, uh, the possum emerger and that just looks like so many different things but it's a good food source for them and certainly likes it. There we go, we're getting him nearly in there. And uh, I guess he's not far off the bank so you could certainly could have caught him from the bank it is just much easier to fish these lake systems with a boat because you can just cover more water depending on where the fish are now we're nearly right come on mate perfect well that's lovely great fish and you certainly can keep fish in tasmania it's quite a, um, a common occurrence we obviously like to put them all back for the enjoyment of somebody else as well but uh, there are so many fish here I don't think you could do any damage by uh, eating a few and they certainly with the food source they've got here they would taste lovely too so uh, Tasmanian trout gold but worth catching more than once beautiful brown again you're just down three pounds they're all uh, not twins what's three of them three of them <coughs> All practically the same size. Come on. Here we go. Fantastic. Thanks, mate. Beautiful. Into that crystal clear water. Yeah, certainly got a fright, but uh, yeah, he's good to go in a couple of days and can be caught over and over again. Fantastic. And the wind sort of picked up here and it's really, uh, the waves have, there's no more slicks left. So that pushes all the, um, the food that was stuck on the, the surface film, pushes it down. So the fish aren't gonna be there to rise. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna drift a little bit with the, um, the wave action with the wind and the fish will be feeding up into it. So we want to be putting our casts um, with the breeze and the fish will come up to it. And we might be able to pick up one or two fishing that way as well. But uh, those midge uh, feeders, she's all finished now. But it was a great couple of hours spent catching some really incredible fish in Great Lake. <laughs> 